Hello and welcome to this Medic Mind tutorial where today we're going to be covering another session of abstract reasoning. And here are our lesson aims today. We're going to introduce you to Spons, which is all about a framework helping you to build up that pattern list that you have in your head in case you get stuck. We're also going to be looking at some example sets to help you work through these examples in real time under real conditions. So before we get started, I want you to pause the video now and have a think to yourself about the types of pattern that you've seen before in abstract reasoning. This will give you some framework before we even begin to think about how to categorise these different types of patterns. OK, hopefully you've had a chance to do that. At MedicMind, we use the acronym called SPONS, which stands for various things. S stands for shape, P stands for position, O stands for orientation, N stands for number, C stands for colour, and S stands for size. And together, these encompass the majority of the patterns that you'll see in the UCAT. There is a caveat though, the UCAT tends to be quite tricksy sometimes and tries to be artistic with some types of patterns. So my main tip is to only use sponks when you're really stuck. If you have a gut feeling about what the pattern might be, by all means investigate that first. And here are all of those things again, just to help you remember it. So again, we've got shape, position, orientation, number, colour and size. And here's our first example. So pause the video now and have a go with this one to see whether you can spot the type of pattern this is by working through your Spong's algorithm. OK, let's go through this together then. So you can see that this pattern is all about the type of shape. Roughly, you get a gut feeling that set A shapes are all kind of regular shapes. They're your standard shapes that you've seen at school. Whereas set B, there's something weird about it. They're more angular. And that gives you some gut feeling to investigate further. Now, if you didn't have that, by all means, work through the Spong's algorithm. And first up on your list is shape. Investigate the shape. So in set A, we can see that they are regular. And that's because all of the angles are actually obtuse, 90 degrees or acute. None of them are reflex. I'm talking about the interior angles here. Whereas in set B, you can see there's always at least one reflex angle in each shape that's present. And this is really important. So when we look through the answers, you can see that test shape number one belongs to set A. And you can kind of eye gauge that because it's a regular sort of pentagon. Test shape two would belong potentially to set B. However, you'll notice no points for guessing that it's black, whereas all of the shapes in set B are white. Now that's important because colour can flavour different patterns and provide a different edge to a standard pattern. So it's always worth considering colour before you move on from a question. Test shape number three belongs to set B. Test shape number four belongs to neither because there's that shape there, the top left shape, that actually doesn't have any sort of reflex angles going on. And the final one belongs to set B. Here's another example for you to have a go at, working through your Spong's algorithm. Now it's not quite easy as being shaped the first up on the list this time, so pause the video now and have a go at this one. Okay, so let's go through this together. So we could think that it's something about shape, it's the first on our list, so let's investigate it. It doesn't seem that there's any sort of uh, patterns with the shapes. You see shapes being repeated between set A and set B, there doesn't seem to be any differentiators there. If we look at position, well, that doesn't really seem to fit either. The shapes seem to occupy random positions. They're not really fixed on the page. So position is out the window. O, orientation. Well, a lot of these shapes are things like triangles, equilateral triangles, which frankly, their orientation doesn't really matter too much. So orientation is out the window again. Number. Now, number is something to investigate. And if you're getting really good at this, that's also one that you potentially should check first with this kind of pattern. The reason I say that is because when you see in the UCAT that certain regular shapes are repeated, it suggests that they're quite, they're making it easy for you to count them up. That should be a real indicator for to get counting. So you can see in set A, the top left corner, you've got three identical triangles. That's designed to make it easier for you to count. Remember, abstract reasoning is about spotting the pattern, not necessarily wasting time counting things. So the UCAT is trying to help you, it's trying to test your pattern spotting. So be aware of these triggers as you go through abstract reasoning practice. You can also see that in the sort of middle right, you've got that quadrilateral, which is repeated three times, again, to make it easier for you to count. So when we count them up, we see that all of the items, all of the examples in set A have an odd number of shapes, whereas in set B, they're all even. 
Now that's enough to be a differentiating pattern and you can happily move on. In the exam, it's also worth considering extra patterns. If you spot the pattern quickly, it's always worth considering secondary patterns. And like I said before, colour can flavour these extra patterns. So you can see in set A, all of the shapes are either white or grey, whereas in set B, all of the shapes are either white or black. Now clearly, if you have a single white shape that can belong to set A or set B, therefore it's not a differentiator. That's why it's a secondary pattern. The odd and even differentiates whether it goes to set A or set B. The colour is like a final check. If it's a black shape, for example, and it's an odd number, it cannot belong to set A because set A doesn't have any black shapes. So it's a final check. And don't worry about it if you don't pick that up in the exam. It's all about picking the primary pattern. And if you have time, try and look for that secondary pattern. So let's go through the answers. You can see that test shape one belongs to set A. It's an odd number, there's only one of them, and it's gray, so therefore it fits the criteria to go into set A. Test shape number two belongs to neither. It's an odd number of shapes, one, but it's black, and this is where the secondary pattern comes in. Now, in the exam, if you picked up on the primary pattern, you're most likely gonna get 60 to 80% of these marks. However, if you pick up on the secondary, uh, secondary pattern, you're going to get the full 100%. Test shape three belongs to, again, neither. It's an odd number of shapes, but it's a mixture of white and black. Test shape four belongs to set B. It's an even number of shapes. They're all white. That's okay, because we have an example in set B of the bottom left corner where we have all white shapes. I like to use that as a technique sometimes when I, I can't quite decide whether the pattern was intentionally like that or not. If you can see an example of precedence in the original set, like we did for set B, the bottom left, then it's fine to sort of categorise that as set B because there's already an example where all of the shapes are white. And finally, the final shape, test shape five, belongs to set A. And that's because, again, it's one item, but it's white this time, and that allows it to be categorised into set A. I hope you enjoyed that lesson. This was a real brief introduction to the Sponx algorithm. So hopefully your take home learning points for today was to learn about what that Sponx algorithm is and help to understand that patterns may involve these extra secondary patterns. They're not always too complicated, but if you get the original pattern, the primary pattern quickly, it's always worth checking for extra secondary patterns, especially with color.